Hey, welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll talk about the life cycle of a data science project from the start till the end. So let's get started. Yeah. So life cycle of a data science project is very important for us to understand because it gives a clear picture on uh, which parts we have to focus and which parts we have to work on. So we'll go in a step by step way in this complete video. So every data science project starts with a use case. So which we essentially call the business understanding. So the use case can be anything. So nowadays data science can be applied in many fields such as banking, finance, manufacturing, transport, healthcare, e-commerce, and we can just pile up every industry uh, here. So data science uh, has become very robust that uh, every field is now moving towards that side. So in this particular uh, you, in this particular example, we'll take the use cases, fraud detection or recommendation engines or sentiment analysis, anything. Uh, for time being, we'll stick on to uh, healthcare uh, use case. Say for example, uh, a patient is having a diabetes or not. So that is our particular use case here. So with the available data, we have to predict whether a patient is diabetic or not diabetic. So that uh, is the use case right now. So that is the business understanding. For this business understanding, we will be requiring the domain expertise. So anyone who is uh, uh, giving us the requirement should be a domain expertise in this particular business understanding and uh, we, we need to uh, get the clear business understanding on that. So once the business understanding is done, the next process is data acquisition and data understanding. So this is a very important step uh, in every machine learning project or every data science project because uh, the data science and machine learning or deep learning whatever is completely dependent on the data that we get. So every result is based upon the data that we feed into our uh, models. So if the data is good, then uh, the model that we develop will also be good. So the first step in data acquisition is the data gathering. So in this particular use case, we can say the data gathering to be uh, we can collect the samples of diabetic patients, their age, their uh, number of children, their uh, pregnancy. So all those data can be gathered from a hospital, a clinic, a local medical industry or uh, uh, medical pharmacies like that. So that is one data gathering uh, and other shared data as well. So once the data is collected, so then the next step is to, we need to clean the data. We need to uh, have the data in the right format so that it will be useful for the other analysis that uh, we are going to do. And especially once the data is in the right format and uh, we collected the data, so that the important step is exploratory data analysis. So which in, in, which in short, uh, we call it as EDA. So in the exploratory data analysis, what we'll do is uh, we'll see the missing values in the data and uh, we'll also do the feature engineering and we also do the feature selection. So missing values is uh, something like in, in if we get a data set, uh, we, we may not expect all the data to be uh, present in that particular data set. There will be some missing values in the data set as well. So we need to handle those missing values. Uh, you can go with central tendencies like mean, median, mode. Uh, something like that and you can uh, just apply that here so once we are done with processing the missing values so the next step that we need to concentrate on is the feature engineering so feature engineering is nothing but uh, so first of all we'll understand what is a feature so feature is nothing but uh, the different data points that we collected uh, during our data acquisition process so uh, in this particular case the diabetic case the features could be the age of the patient the gender of the patient uh, whether the patient had any uh, post-medical or pre-medical uh, histories, uh, any uh, pre-surgeries, what is the height of the patient, what is the weight of the patient uh, and uh, the genetic information regarding the person and uh, things like that. So these are the essential criteria data points which will help us in predicting whether the particular person is diabetic or not. So these are called uh, features. So with this only, only with these features we are going to predict uh, whether the person is diabetic or not. So we need to examine these features and uh, the machine learning models and the deep learning models uh, will be able to only handle uh, numerical values they will not be able to handle any alphabet values for example gender so if we take gender uh, so gender can either take male or female but uh, our neural networks will never understand what is male and what is female so we need to convert these male and female into zeros and ones into a numerical value which we call as label encoding or one hot encoding so this encoding are a part of this feature engineering at times we also end up in uh, having an imbalanced data set. So imbalanced data set is nothing but uh, in this diabetic case, an imbalanced data set uh, could be 100 patients 
uh, having diabetes and 900 patients do not have any diabetes so if you see in this case one side of the uh, data set is very biased so if this is the case our, our uh, model may not turn out well so these things should be handled uh, in the feature engineering process so once the feature engineering process is completed the next step is feature selection so feature selection is also a very important step uh, in the uh, data analysis part so feature selection is nothing but not all the features help us in predicting the output say for example as we discussed the age gender uh, the uh, medical conditions of the of the patient the medical conditions of the patient uh, may be important to us in predicting whether the patient is diabetic or not but uh, in any manner the name of the person uh, could be in the data set but that name of the person will not be helpful for us in uh, predicting whether this patient is diabetic or not so this particular feature is not very helpful for us so we will be removing that uh, particular feature from the data set so this is called feature selection so we only select the features that are very important to us in predicting what the output is so any feature which is not important to us will be removed from the data set so that the model uh, accuracy will be improved so this is called uh, feature selection so this is also a part of the data analysis part and uh, once the data analysis part is completed the next step that we are moving towards is the modeling so modeling is also very important so once the data is ready to get modeled that is uh, all the data is converted into numerical values the next step should be uh, modeling so before uh, coming to modeling there is also some things that uh, i need to discuss so there is also called feature scaling so feature scaling is also very important because uh, feature scaling is nothing but say, say for example you have uh, many bigger values in your data set so those bigger values may overlate uh, the other features say for example uh, you have a age of uh, 20 and uh, you have an annual income of say uh, 50,000 so this 50,000 value is too high and this 20 is too low so this 50,000 may somehow overshadow this smaller value so in order to avoid that we will uh, have to scale all the all our features into a certain range say it can be from minus 1 to plus 1 it can be from 0 to 1 so essentially we need to scale all those features into a particular range so that uh, the calculations made by the machine learning model is also faster and also none of the features are being overshadowed so this is also very important now coming into modeling so modeling once the data is done uh, we need to apply a lot of machine learning models here uh, we can use a uh, machine learning model such as uh, decision tree random forest k nearest neighbors so since this is a classification problem we can go with a lot of uh, machine learning algorithms that, that we have so once we develop the machine learning models the next step is to calculate the accuracy so the accuracy can also be calculated by a n number of ways so some of the most common ways are confusion matrix cross validation and uh, auc roc curves so all those are uh, methods to calculate the accuracy of a particular model so these things are also very important in the modeling stage so once the modeling stage is completed the next step that we are going to do is the deployment so only with the help of the model deployment we can convert our uh, machine learning or deep learning model into a usable product that the customer uh, will be using so in order to do that we will be using a number of cloud platforms like aws we can use azure you can use uh, heroku so there are a lot of services and a lot of platform as services like heroku so these are basically used to uh, deploy our model so these deployment can also be done with help of uh, python libraries like flask and uh, we will be discussing all these things in detail uh, every video uh, that i upload in the future so you don't have to worry about it so i'll make a, make uh, videos on all these topics with in depth uh, understanding so uh, after uh, the deployment is made so basically the deployment is made uh, with the help of apis so whenever a front end uh, operation is being done so that particular operation will be uh, handled uh, by uh, libraries like flask and the corresponding output will be given to the customer so uh, uh, once the deployment is done this is not a end process so we'll also again collect data from the customers again uh, whatever the data that the customers are giving we'll collect all those data and we'll again feed it into our uh, models and try to make the models better so it's always a two-way decision so you can also see all the arrows here are uh, double-sided so everything is uh, back propagated so once uh, the
So once the model is deployed, we'll be tuning the model again and again based on the customer data that we get for uh, instance in this case. So in this diabetes case, uh, over time, the lifestyle of the people may change, uh, the food habits of people may change, so the diets of people may change. So because of that, there can be a change in the predictions that we are uh, making. We in, in case if the uh, model is doing bad, uh, we'll be changing the model also. We can uh, change the model. For example, if it is in K nearest neighbors, we'll change the model uh, to to uh, decision tree rather than K nearest neighbors and things like that. So essentially, the idea is to collect uh, lots and lots of data. So more the data, the better the model. So this is uh, how the performance is uh, being monitored uh, in the deployment part. So this is the basic understanding of a data science lifecycle project. Uh, hope you guys liked it. Uh, do post your comments uh, if you have anything. Uh, any questions, uh, do post your comments and uh, please subscribe to the channel.